No. Good evening, everyone. We will call the August 15, 2011 City Council meeting to order. First order of business is roll call and determination of the quorum. Charlene? Nordstrom? Here. Mason? Here. Doyle? Here. Sasso? Here. Davis? Here. Peterson? Here. Roberts? Here. Brown? Here. Wright? Here. We have quorum. Uh, next order of business is the invocation and uh, Pastor Hemmen from First Baptist Church. Would you please come forward and everybody please rise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's please bow. Most holy God, at the beginning of this evening of business, we pause for a few moments of silence. We ask for your wisdom for these leaders of our city. You have blessed them with wisdom, with energy, and with a passion for leading us. And so we pray now for guidance. This has been a challenging time in our city's history. And so we pray for all of our city's leaders, and especially think of Officer Doyle and his recovery and for those families of the officers who have died. So please bless the thoughts that happen here tonight. Give them words of wisdom. Give them clarity of thought. It's in your name we pray, God. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor Hemmen. The next order of business is to adopt the agenda. Do we have any uh, additions to tonight's agenda? Additions to tonight's agenda? Uh, uh, right before uh, we do, I don't think our Veteran of the Month is here tonight, so right before we do our employee uh, award, our police chief, uh, Steve Allender, will be um, saying a few words. And uh, we have anything to add to the agenda? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? Um. We have a motion by Doyle and a second by uh, Brown to adopt the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next order of business is to approve the minutes for August 1. Motion by Wright, second by Roberts. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. And if the uh, entire city council could join us behind the podium. Well, before I tell you how great Deb Katie is, I just wanted to address the council and the audience here today and the community and let you know that even though we are two weeks past the uh, worst day in our department's history, and perhaps our uh, city's history uh, um, since the flood, um, I just want to let you know that we're going to be okay. We've gone through a lot in the last couple of weeks. We have had two uh, gut-wrenching funerals. We have seen some miraculous um, stories of heroism. Uh, 
this this has been a terrible blow to the city and and um, I've never seen a community hurt like this and band together and uh, and show such a positive side of itself before I do uh, want to let you know that um, I will be calling uh, some North Rapid meetings, some public meetings, to reassure the folks in those neighborhoods that, um, that everything is still okay there. This shooting does not reflect an upward trend or a spike in violent behavior or anything of this nature. It is, certainly was violent, but uh, one incident in and of itself is not a, not a trend. Uh, we're going to recover from this. Our employees are going to recover. There's been a lot of questions from the community. I've uh, been trying to answer them one at a time. I'll just let you know that all of our employees are going to get access to any help that they need as far as counseling and that sort of thing. We are trying uh, as best we can to take care of everyone. The mayor and council have been very supportive during this time, but uh, frankly, I just cannot believe the community support. Uh, it has been so great, no matter what happens from here on out in my career, I'm going to remember that as the highlight of my time in law enforcement. So I just want to say thank you. And that's all. Twenty-five years of service. The City of Rapid City, the Mayor and the Council would like to take pleasure in presenting the certificate to Captain Deb Cady to acknowledge her 25 years of distinguished service to the City of Rapid City and the Rapid City Police Department. I'd like to have uh, Steve Allender say a few words and present the certificate. Thank you, Mayor. Deb Katie's awesome. She started in this business before it was fashionable for women to be in law enforcement. Uh, she, that didn't bother her. She came right in, uh, did an outstanding job. She's done outstanding in every position she's held. She was a patrol officer. She's moved her way up. She was in charge of the drug unit for several years. Uh, she's just done an outstanding job. Currently is captain in charge of support services, which has training and recruiting and community relations and records and cl clerical and many of the other support positions in the department. And she's doing an awesome job. And uh, so she's celebrating 25 years of service, which officially means she's worked here longer than she hasn't worked here. So uh, very proud of her and very grateful for her for sticking around so long. So uh, let's have a hand for Deb Katie. I want to say uh, thank you, everybody. Um, time flies when you're having fun. It's hard to believe it's been 25 years, but it's been a, a true honor serving uh, the police department and the city. And uh, to quote the chief, I don't, I don't feel I'm awesome, but I guess if I am, it's only because of the people that I've, I've worked with side by side and learned from. So again, thanks, everybody. I would just like to say a few words as well. I want to thank you, uh, Captain, for your many years of leadership in the police department. I also want to take a moment to um, uh, thank Steve Allender for his uh, tremendous uh, leadership. Uh, the last uh, few weeks were absolutely awful, uh, but um, we also saw the community come together in an amazing way. and. Um, 
Steve Allender showed tremendous uh, leadership. He was under tremendous amount of uh, pressure dealing with all, all facets of everything that was uh, happening and uh, just uh, very proud of the way he uh, handled the situation. I'm also very uh, thankful for the support that we received from the council and council leadership. And we made the decision to make the Civic Center available for the uh, funerals. Uh, for example, council leadership was very supportive. Uh, Dave uh, Davis uh, was very supportive uh, when I wasn't available, and I appreciate him uh, for that. And uh, um, this uh, affected all of us, and uh, affected, uh, especially affected uh, Charity Doyle. And uh, we're uh, thankful to uh, have her back. We're thankful that uh, Tim uh, is uh, um, uh, out of the hospital, and uh, we'll probably need to pitch in and buy him a new blender in a, another six weeks or so. I'm sure he'll be tired of uh, applesauce, but we're very thankful that he is doing so well. And, uh, um, and uh, the community has come together in an amazing way. There's been a lot of talk about memorials, and there will be memorials. In fact, uh, when I spoke to the police chief of Midland, Michigan, I think there will probably be something up there as well. I know Truman Savory at New Beginnings uh, Baptist Church would like to do something. You know, um, you know I, I think that uh, the idea of you know, the McCandless Armstrong uh, Arena or public safety building or something big has a good ring to it, but it, I, I think we need to walk around the lantern, uh, let things settle for a little bit, and, and uh, let the chief uh, get settled in from his much needed vacation, and then we'll have that, uh, that discussion. So thanks again to um, the council, and I want to give uh, Steve Allender another round of applause. Jerry, if Jerry Wright and Dave Davis could stay up here, please. We have. Sorry. Oh, absolutely. Forgot to do a picture. Could we have you come up one more time? that one for next time. Is John Binger here? John, our Yard of the Month, is he here tonight? Okay. Next order of business is general public comment. This is a time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken at the meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by unanimous vote of the alder, alder persons present. And uh, we'll first recognize uh, Gail uh, Holbrook.
takes me a little while to get up. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for allowing me a few minutes. And uh, um, congratulations to the rest of the councilmen and women. Um, I've been where you guys are now. And I have been there long enough to know that uh, when you do something right, you catch hell for it. If you do something wrong, you catch hell for it. And you get a nasty letter or a nasty telephone call or something like that. I want to deliver my message in person. For the last five weeks, uh, there's been a crew at our in our neighborhood, Meadowbrook and uh, Parker Drive, and they're replacing that street. And uh, uh, the members of that community have appointed me as a committee of one <laughs> to come thank you. It's, uh, we're going to enjoy it for a long, long time, and uh, I want you to have the good news as well as the bad. So. You guys have a, uh, a successful meeting, and God bless you all. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Gail, and thank you for your many years of service to our, our community, both the council and the county commission, and in many other ways. And uh, I'd like to ask uh, Dave Davis if he'd like to say a few words as well. Thank you, Mayor. I should turn the lights on on myself because if I get started on Gail Holbrook, it could go all night long. When Gail says he sat where we sit, he doesn't just mean that he fills these chairs. He's filled these shoes, he's walked the walk, and he has the right to talk the talk. And the compliments that he gave us tonight, I take with, with all due sincerity. Gail, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate the service that you have and continue to give the community. And it's just great to see you out tonight and still kicking and throwing your cowboy hat. So keep it up, partner. Thank you. Our next uh, public comment uh, request is from Catherine Novotny, and she has uh, two speaker request forms. And uh, we'll just combine the two together. Catherine, you have uh, three minutes, and the floor is yours. First, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak, and I'd like to preface my remarks by saying that for 40 years I've worked in the field of uh, law enforcement and corrections. I was one of the first students at the University of South Dakota in a program that Ed Wubeck, who was the prosecutor from Chamberlain, started the program after eight people were killed in a drunk driving accident. And the case was thrown out of court because of a poorly written police report. So this is even more tragic than what is happening here. And I do appreciate the tragedy of what's going on here. I would like to bring up issues of misconduct in both the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department in terms of the writing of crime reports and collusion, which is probably to the point of conspiracy to obstruct justice on the part of the serving of civil processes and on the part of bypassing the civil court in procedures such as tenant landlord law. Uh, I personally got a default judgment three weeks before the court date. Uh, and in the police department, there is presently an $8,000 fine to be paid to the police department as restitution. This is totally wrong. It should go through the clerk of courts. And I would also wonder why someone is cut a deal who should be on a sexual predator list. This is totally unconscionable in any type of law enforcement. End of that, my second is I would like to have some information about how the Civic Center is managed and why a church is allowed to hold services there. This to me seems to be a conflict of church and state and why the public was not allowed to have a buffet for the Rapid City community when the first funeral was held, which we were denied by the food and beverage manager of the Civic Center. That's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, next order of business is the public comment uh, for uh, items uh, 4 through 37. 
Do we have a motion to open public comment? We have a motion by Sasso and second by Peterson to open public comment on items uh, 4 through uh, 37. I do not have any speaker request forms on items 4 through 37. Would anybody like to speak on items 4 through 37? If not, do we have a motion to close public comment? Second. We have a motion by Brown, second by Roberts to close public comment on items uh, 4 through 37. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're now on consent items, items 4 through 35. Would any members of the council uh, like to pull any of these items? We'll first recognize Alderman Jordan Mason. Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pull items number 23 and 27. 23 and 27. Any other items? And we'll recognize City Attorney Jason Green. Jason. Item 25, please. Okay. We have item 23, 25, and 27. Any additional items? Seeing none. Do we have a motion to approve items uh, 4 through 35 with the exception of 23, 25, and 27? We have a motion by Peterson and a second by Sasso. For approval, Jason, you still have your light on, is that, no, okay. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number uh, 23, and our Public Works uh, Chairman, Gary Brown, would you read this into the agenda for us? Thank you, Mayor. 23 is to acknowledge report on parking lots and area fund. I'll yield the floor to Alderman Mason. Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is I've been looking at the attachment on this document and I have uh, a few questions and just really talking about the payoff time for this. Um, looking at some previous articles um, and just from memory, I remember that we have spent uh, a considerable amount of money on the parking meters in the downtown area and after looking at this chart uh, for the expenses and the uh, recorded of direct expenses to the government month to date, um, it just seems like there's a uh, substantial uh, decrease here, if that's correct, in the red. So I'm just wondering if, if this is an actual profitable operation from what I'm looking at. And I guess I would turn that question to Ms. Pauline Sumption. Pauline Sumption. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you are looking at the month, to, the month to date one, that is for December only. And in December, that is the month that I do all of the year-end adjusting entries. So that is not the one to look at. You want to look at the year to date, which does show a um, net profit of $131,000 for 2009. Thank you, Ms. Sumption. I'm also curious. Um, with the amount of money that we spend on the parking meters, including labor and the uh, personnel that go to managing maintenance, you know, maintenance of these, um, do you know what the payoff time for, you know, when we buy, for example, the parking meters in the downtown area with the amount of revenue we're coming on, do you know what the payoff time for that is? That is something that I would have to research because I do not know what the cost was initially for all of the meters at this point. So I would have to research that for you. Appreciate that. I guess uh, one of the things in just looking at this that has got me thinking over the weekend is I'm just wondering if, um, you know, the payoff time with the amount of money that we spend into this, including maintenance costs and the personnel that go into, uh, you know, checking these parking meters on a daily basis if the you know revenues exceed the expenses in the long term here and i'm just kind of curious where that's at uh, thank you i'll yield the floor i recognize alderman gary brown thank you mayor i'll move to acknowledge the report for the parking uh, meters and uh, fund Sorry. motion by brown second by peterson any further discussion seeing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries uh, item number 20, uh, item 25, Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, item 27 is... Um, 25. I'm sorry. Uh, item 25 is to acknowledge the update from Randy Rice, uh, Randy Ross of the Alliance of Tribal Tourism regarding the Hay Sapa Vision 2012 project and request the Mayor to direct the City Attorney's Office to prepare a resolution of support. And I'll yield the floor. Jason Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to let the council know that resolution is on the dais. It's predominantly um, the resolution that Mr. Ross presented to my office. We simply formatted it into our 
um, usual form. So recommendation is for approval of the resolution he's asked for. We have a motion by Peterson and a second by Mason. And uh, thank you, Jason, for, um, for your efforts on this. So we received some changes late Friday and appreciate you putting that together. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number 27, Alderman Mason. Item 27 is to approve the resolution number 2011, tax 095, setting ambulance rates. And um, if I may have the have floor. The floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in looking at this um, and re-examining this, I did have a uh, question, hopefully that uh, Chief Multivern can answer, but in looking at this resolution, it, it uh, notes that we're looking at a increase of 3% in compliance uh, in accordance with the regional medical CPI. Uh, from also from thinking back in the past, I remember that we've written off some ambulance bills. And something that I've also talked to Mr. Multivern about is uh, the statute of limitations um, expiring on some of those billing uh, items. And I guess I'm wondering if there, if that was explored to look at if whether or not we could increase that and if that would be something that may lessen the increase rate here. Thank you. Actually, that is something we look at, those write-offs, and, and obviously that's uh, somewhat a factored into our ability to operate a smooth enterprise fund and, and collect all those ambulance fees that we can. Uh, at this time, we do a pretty comprehensive review of all those outstanding ambulance bills before we come to a position in front of you to ask for those uh, to be written off. So um, we do exhaust uh, all our efforts internally to make sure that we capture every uh, bit of those monies that we can before we actually go to a, a write-off process. So um, we've even actually been uh, challenged before that we wait too long to write them off. So uh, we do go through a pretty exhaustive process. We do that internally with our own staff. Um, nationally speaking, our numbers are higher than national averages in terms of collection rates. So we're pretty comfortable with the process. And just to give you an idea, our, uh, our collections of the, the amount of money that we can actually bill for and collect without taking mandatory write-offs from uh, entities like Medicare and things like that, we're at about an 85% collection rate, which, again, uh, if you travel around the country, is almost unheard of to, uh, to get those types of numbers. So. Um, yeah, it is, it is definitely something we look at, and, and uh, there's not a lot of wiggle room. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Um, just as a follow-up comment, I, I think uh, you and I seem to see the same goal that uh, just want to see a smooth enterprise fund and, and frankly, uh, you know, kind of like to keep ambulance rates cheap for citizens as well as we can. Thank you. I'll yield. Thank you, Alderman Mason. We'll go to Alderwoman Bonnie Peterson. Bonnie. Okay, thank you. I don't know if I need the chief or the attorney, so we'll uh, list out. Um, bills that are not paid, is there any mechanism for if people own their homes to put a lien against their house uh, to collect? Uh, Yes, actually, that's a great question, and we do file liens from time to time and are actually pretty successful. Uh, our billing staff uh, on a typical week will bring one or two of those in for me to sign off, and, and so we are. Uh, we're hesitant to file liens because of the ramifications that it may do for a person with their personal finances, but um, when all other uh, means are exhausted to recollect those funds, we will go after uh, filing a lien, and, and we work with the city attorney's office pretty extensively on that to make sure that we're meeting all the uh, uh, other means that we can to collect those before we go to that process. Okay, I just wanted to um, make sure that we were doing what we can. Um, thank you. And we'll go to Alderman Ron Sasso. Ron? I just wanted to commend your, your staff for the hard work that they, uh, they've they done and, and uh, having after touring and getting to see how hard they're working on trying to make sure that they're able to uh, collect and get the insurance. And uh, I think they really deserve some praise because seeing those numbers 
and walking through that uh, really is, is something that uh, we're very fortunate. So thank you very much. But Alderman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief, I too want to pat you and your staff on the back. After having sat in the MSOC committee meetings, uh, there, there is a, a unique opportunity challenge involved in the service that you provide. Uh, unlike many businesses that can pick and choose their clientele, you don't have that opportunity. But rather, you have the challenge that when the call comes in, you respond. Whether that person has a home that you may choose to put a lien on or choose not to because of the negative ramifications, as you said, or whether that person doesn't have a home and is in need of other services and help in the community, you still provide that ambulance service when the call comes in. That coupled with the federal reimbursement changes that have taken place have tied your hands significantly. And to let that, this conversation go without saying how much your hands have been tied in the last couple of years, I think we'd be very much remiss. Um, I don't want to see the rates go up either any more than I, sh I know you do in conversation. But by the same token, we do want to know that when that 911 call goes in, that there's an operational rig on its way to take one of us to the services that we need. So I appreciate the due diligence. I appreciate you sitting on the hot seat while we grill you over the fact that you're having to raise rates. And please keep up the good work. Thank you, Mike. And we'll go to Alderman Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to add my kudos also to what the chief is uh, attempting to do over there and the assistant chief that also gave us a report on our tour of the facility and his attempts and the hard work that he has to do in uh, doing the collections on that. And uh, I see the uh, council leadership has also put me on the MSOC committee, so I, I want to thank them for that and for um, uh, helping me through the transition. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll be asking some more questions. So, um, but the uh, the main point is that uh, the uh, the assistant chief that guided us through on that tour on that uh, really relayed to us his concerns for the uh, um, collections that we're not able to get and and his attempts on working through that process. And um, I, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll be okay, and we'll, we'll be all right. But uh, the main main thing of it is that the uh, medical inflation rate seems to be going up, you know, at least twice the rate of what we're establishing on this three percent rate. So um, uh, my, uh, that's all I can say is just uh, kudos to the, uh, the the crew that does uh, the ambulance runs. Thank you. I'll yield the floor. Thank you. Any further discussion? Do we have a motion? We do not have a motion. Second. We have a motion by Roberts and a second by Davis for approval. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're now on items uh, 36 and 37. Does somebody want to offer a motion to continue these items until September 6? A motion by Peterson and a second by Brown. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're now on the non-consent portion of the calendar, items 38 through 57. And we do have um, several speaker request forms. Can we have a motion first to open public comment? Second. Motion by Brown, second by Peterson to open public comment on items 38 through 57. If you'd like to speak on items 38 through 57 and have not filled out a speaker request form, uh, you may do so now. And we'll, on do we have a motion? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, and we'll first recognize uh, Marla Murphy on item 39. Against uh, 39. And the reason I'm against 39 is it's not needed. There should be no reason why anybody up there needs to read an email and make rulings based on what someone might say out of that email. You don't have to reply to it, but once you open it and once you read it, 
it becomes part of your decision process. The best thing to do is not open or read the emails. Do it before you have the council meeting and after the council meeting. Otherwise, if you're going to do it, if an email is opened or received while you're on this council, it needs to be part of the public record so everybody else can know exactly what people are asking for you up there on the dais. And I know in the past that those computers are great tools, but I've known some council people that have watched Monday Night Football on those computers. Should not be done. It's an abuse. You're there to work. You're there to, you're, you're there to do the duty. And if you're going to go with this, add it that they become part of their public record or just leave it the way it is and not worry about it. You can still read your email at 7 o'clock and once this is over and reply. No reason for you to read your emails. Thank you. Our next uh, speaker request form is from Robert Ewing. This is on item 48. Mr. Ewing. on item 48. Yes, uh, Robert Ewing. I'm the uh, chairman of the Ad Hoc uh, Security Guard Review Task Force Committee. Nice long name on there. Uh, we started meeting with this committee in February of this year and then have worked on it uh, for almost six months going through uh, the code and the ordinance that, as it is right now and making some changes. Uh, the committee was made up with people from uh, law enforcement, uh, both the uh, sheriff's department and the city police department. Uh, we had uh, people from two different uh, organizations that provide professional private security in Rapid City, plus uh, people that uh, have worked in the security industry. We did a lot of uh, looking at other states, other cities, and uh, work with uh, our legal counsel here at the city to make some changes in this. It was pretty outdated. We still had a lot of things in here that you would see with uh, merchant security, uh, security police, some of those things were addressed. We removed everything that uh, really doesn't need to be part of that at this time. And I just uh, wanted to let you know that we had some good people working on this and I'd like you to look at it and see what you can come up with with our suggestions and we're always open to uh, comments or questions anytime you want. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Ewing. You. Next speaker request form is on item 51, item 51, and this is uh, from uh, David Lust, legal counsel for Simcom. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. I'm David Lust, I'm legal counsel for Simcom Inc. I'm here today to oppose the proposal to uh, force SimCom to put a, sim put a sidewalk on, the, on its property location on Disk Drive. I oppose it for four reasons. One, no need has been demonstrated that a sidewalk is necessary. Two, it's an undue burden on SimCom. Three, this, this council set a precedent uh, a month ago uh, on, on waiving the obligation to install sidewalks. And fourth, and maybe most importantly, I'm concerned about the message it sends to the business community. Regarding the need, the city has a master bike and pedestrian plan, and nowhere in that plan is this area of this drive identified as an area of concern. Uh, there's no indication in that plan that there have been pedestrian accidents or bike accidents in this area of this drive. And in fact, that plan calls for a bike path in that location, not a sidewalk. Moreover, that property has been there for decades. There has been no sidewalk. That, combined with the lack of accidents and injuries in that area, really, in my mind, highlights uh, the need that it's not necessary. The burden on SimCom. You're asking, you would be asking SimCom to build a 1,346-foot sidewalk at approximately $150,000 expense plus the maintenance expense. Again, in July 18th of last month, you granted a waiver for property on East Highway 44 to not have to install a sidewalk in their location. That's the JD Precast property. And finally, you know, if you're going to impose this burden on SimCom, a really outstanding corporate citizen, they essentially took a building that was not being utilized, had no prospects for sale, 
have sunk $2 million into, into, to rehab, rehabilitate that property. And now you're going to reward them by sticking them with a $150,000 bill. That, to me, is not sending a good message to businesses of this community or businesses that are looking to come to this community. I think it's a, it's a bit heavy-handed to impose that on someone in that circumstance when there's no demonstrated need. So I would ask this council to uh, either grant a variance and not have to require a sidewalk or to table this motion. I'll stand by for the questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Form. The next speaker request form is on item 56, item 56, and this is a uh, Annie Shaffey uh, from Dream Design. Mr. Shaffey, the floor is yours. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council members. My name is Hanny Shaffey with Dream Design and President's Plaza. And uh, in the audience is my uh, partner in the President's Plaza, Pat Hall, a premier property. And uh, before I actually speak about the project, I'm honored to introduce one of our guests in our community who is visiting us as part of the International Visitor Bureau, which is actually a group sponsored mainly by the State Department. Uh, Dr. Uh, Saleh, I mean, uh, Salah Arafa, he's a professor at, of physics at the University of Cairo, and uh, he is one of the few physicists that actually uh, worked on the lunar rock that was brought into Earth from, uh, through Apollo 13. So, Dr. Arafa, if you could stand up, please. Our national organization is holding its conference in Rapid City, and uh, he's one of the guest speakers at the conference. Thank you for that. Uh, as far as the President's Plaza, the project is moving forward really greatly. And uh, you know, as I know, that a project of that magnitude has its uh, challenges and its successes. And I believe we have a lot more successes than challenges to report to you. The successes and the report include a lot of material, and some of that material is confidential in nature. And uh, we've been working with a lot of clients, and uh, we have accomplished a lot. And what we would request, you know, as we mentioned before prior to the elections, is a committee to be formed so we could meet on a monthly basis so that committee would check through a checklist which we would prepare, uh, prepare uh, in cooperation with the council members and that committee. So that checklist will be, report, will be reported on on a monthly basis, if not even more frequent as needed. And uh, the project is getting very close to the timeline for construction. We are hoping to break ground in April of next year, you know, come, <laughs> you know, whatever the uh, things are. Uh, as far as the committee, we would like to have it be formed by the council and the mayor as soon as possible so we could start the, setting the checklist and reporting and discussing some of the items that can be shared in public and some of the items that, you know, could wait until the proper timing to make them public. Uh, I hope that will give you an idea about where we're going, and I hope we respectfully that we, I mean, let's put it this way, we respectfully request the formation of such a committee as soon as possible so we could share with them some of the items that we need to report on. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a motion to close public comment on items 38 through 57. Second. We have a motion by uh, Brown, second by Peterson, to close public comment on items 38 through 57. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number uh, 38, uh, Alderman Mason. Item number 38 is the first reading of ordinance number 5731, supplemental appropriation, appropriation number 6 for 2011, and I move to approve. We have a motion by Mason and a second by Brown. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item is uh, 
Item 39, the first reading of ordinance number 5733, an ordinance to allow the Rapid City Common Council to review email messages during city council meetings by amending section 2.04.120, section B of the Rapid City Municipal Code, and I yield the floor. Okay, do we have a motion or discussion? And we'll recognize Bonnie Peterson. Yes, thank you. I would like to make a motion to amend. We, we need a, a motion to uh, approve. Oh, we have to and approve. If you want, you can offer a motion to approve with the amended language. And I think that would be acceptable as well. Okay. I would like to make a motion to approve and uh, also to amend the ordinance. It is... Um, the word during uh, on the second line should go to uh, prior to uh, the current council meeting. Um, can I talk after I make yeah. a motion? Okay. Uh, the reason I'm making that motion, um, because this more clearly uh, indicates our intent, uh, as Ms. Murphy uh, stated earlier, her concern. Um, emails are really our file cabinets like just right now tonight uh, David Lust has spoke on something that I have an email on and I can't uh, <laughs> go in and look at it uh, because basically the email f works as um, our filing cabinet and we are not allowing active communication um, through our email during the council meeting and I know that council leadership will be vigorously enforcing any violations that may uh, come up for that because we feel that the uh, constituents uh, need to trust us. Um, I know there's been some problems in the past, but I think we are uh, much more, uh, I don't know, more mature <laughs> audience, our council, so that uh, we, I don't think we're going to have any problems with people violating, and if we do, then we will uh, re-amend. So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Okay. And that's your motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion by Peterson and a second by Wright. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 40, Alderman Mason. Item number... 40 is the second reading of ordinance number 5732, an ordinance to change the qualifications for membership on the Rapid City Regional Airport Board by amending section 2.72.020 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, and I move to approve. Second. So we have a motion, a motion by Mason and a second by Doyle. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number 41. Item number 41 is the first reading of ordinance 5734 and an ordinance amending section 17.06 of the Rapid City Municipal Code and it is to rezone from general commercial district to light industrial district and I move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mason and a second by Peterson for approval and uh, the location is East Anamosa Street and North Creek Drive. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed motion carries. Item 42, Alderman Mason. Item 42 is first reading of ordinance 5735 and ordinance amending section 17.06 to rezone from general agricultural district to light industrial uh, for the <clears throat> Century Resources Incorporated and East End uh, located at the current or located at East Animosa Street, southeast of the intersection of East Animosa Street and North Creek Drive, and I move to approve. We have a motion by Mason and a second by Roberts. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed motion carries. Item 43, Alderman Mason. Item 43 is first reading of Ordinance 5736 and Ordinance Amending Section 17.06 to rezone from General Agricultural District to Low Density Residential District uh, located at the current northern terminus of Dunsmore Road, and I move to approve. We have a motion by Mason and a second by Brown. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed motion carries. Item 44. Item 44, first reading of ordinance 
number 5737 ordinance amending section 17.06. Uh, rezoning from general commercial district to low density residential district and for the west side of Bent Drive south of Catron Boulevard and east of Sheridan Lake Road and I move to approve. We have a motion and a second for approval. Motion by Mason, second by Brown. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries 45. Item 45 is the first reading of Ordinance 5738 and Ordinance Amending Section 17.06, and it is rezoning from General Agricultural District to Low Density Residential District for, located on the west side of um, Bent Drive, south of Catron Boulevard, and east of Sheridan Lake Road. And I move to approve. We have a motion by Mason and a second by Roberts. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed motion carries. Uh, item number uh, 46, uh, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. A request by Dream Design International for a preliminary plat for proposed lots 23 through 27 of Block 7, lots 2 through 3 of Block 12 of Red Rock Meadows, located at the current northern terminus of Dunsmore Road. Now move approval. Motion by Brown, second by Roberts. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Uh, legal and finance items. Item number 47, Alderman Mason. Item number 47 is request from Nicholas and Heather Rodham for video lottery license, and I move to deny. We have a motion by Mason and a second by Peterson for denial. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. 48. Next item is n item number 48, ad hoc security guard review task force recommendations, and I yield the floor. Do we have a, a motion? We'll go to our city attorney, Jason Green. Jason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is obviously a significant revision to the provisions of the ordinance. It's likely to impact some, some uh, businesses that have not been impacted previously. And there's been some discussion about the possibility of a public hearing just on this item. Um, as alternatives for that, I think you could set a special council meeting to hold the public hearing. I think you could also ask the task force to hold a public hearing and consider any comments that they get um, at that time. So uh, my recommendation is that you um, take some time on this because it is a significant revision, but I think it's an important one that, uh, that deserves to be addressed um, with due consideration. Thank you, Jason, and we'll go to uh, Dave Davis, Alderman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to propose a motion to request that the task force hold public hearings and report back to us within 60 days. We have a, a motion by Davis and a second by Nordstrom to ask the uh, Security Guard Review Task Force to hold public hearings and report back to the council uh, within 60 days. And we'll recognize Bonnie Peterson. Yes, thank you. I wanted to ask Mr. Ewing if he would, uh, if his task force thinks they would be up to that. Okay, thank you. And he nodded yes. So, any further discussion? Alderman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ewing, I guess the, the point that we wanted to make sure with the public hearing is there are some entities that as you well know from the rewrite that may be affected that have not been affected in the past and we want to make sure that this is not a surprise to them. So obviously uh, those entities that are running security forces that, that move from place to place but work for themselves or are, are jobbing out uh, that, that may be required to get a license now that haven't in the past. I want to make sure that you invite those to the public hearings and, and make sure that they hear and understand what the the gist of the changes are that you've had. Okay, thank you. Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to take a moment to also state that uh, while I understand the amount of time that is put into this, I also additionally want the council to have enough time to really review this document because uh, for myself, uh, there are some areas of specifically the language in the definitions and some other sections that um, I'm looking forward to in having a, a thorough discussion and being able to review uh, in depth. Thank you. And we'll go to Alderman Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 
I'm just having those little glitches with the lights again here up here on this side. Um, anyway, um, I just wanted to make sure I was included on the uh, emails uh, that w was in um, sending out the um, public notice dates when those come about. Uh, if, if Mr. Yoon can uh, uh, help me out in w when those meetings are set up, I'd sure like to attend those. Thank you. I'll yield the floor. Jason Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My office has provided staff support to this committee and will certainly invite the council as well. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number 49, Alderman Mason. Item 49 is to authorize the mayor and finance officer to sign agreement between the City of Rapid City and MHL LLC, and I move to approve. We have a motion by Mason, second by Nordstrom. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 50, Alderman Mason. Item 50 is to authorize the mayor and finance officer to sign First Amendment to lease agreement for Main Street Square, and I move to approve. Motion by Mason, second by Peterson. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 51, Alderman Brown. Authorize staff to proceed with the process to order in sidewalks and to allow the property owners until September 1st, 2011 to install the sidewalks on their own accord. And I'll yield to the floor for discussion. We'll first go to Jerry Wright, Alderman Wright. Thank you, Mayor. I had some, had some sympathy for the owner, and I still do. But I want to say something that might get me in a fist fight here. I don't like the word precedent, because on the property on East 44, I think it's very important that people on the council in these positions use judgment and common sense. In that case, it was a similar situation, what I call a sidewalk going to nowhere. It isn't that I don't support a sidewalk in the area. I'd like to see a plan for a sidewalk continuous within the area. However, if someone says you're setting a precedent, you're raising a red flag in front of a bull. I'm telling you, if that's the case it's going to be, we're going to, I wouldn't hesitate to order them in because we're not going to get blocked into a corner like that. That's what happens when, when people take threats to people they're trying to make good decisions. I think Gail Holbrook said it. I'm totally sympathetic with the owner. I'd, I'd like to see a sidewalk system where we say we're going to build a sidewalk in the area, we're going to go from A to Z, not in a little segment of it. But I don't like being threatened. Thank you, sir. Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to take just a quick second for the new council that's here to understand where this is coming from. Starting on April 4th in a city council meeting, Mr. Dunham himself appeared before us. And to read the mini meeting minutes to clarify the situation, Mr. Dunham indicated that SimCom would be willing to provide a progress report to the council in September. That date was later revised. A substitute motion was made by Weifenbach, seconded by Watt, to continue the item to the August 15th, 2011 council meeting. That's where we are today. I, too, will acknowledge Alderman Wright's uh, point in the idea of being threatened. Um, I think it's pretty clear that we have gone over this issue. In addition, uh, to say that SimCom is being singled out, I have trouble with that. There are three property owners involved. In addition, the City of Rapid City provided $243,000 to SimCom to provide jobs. We also helped you locate that building through our economic development office. The city of Rapid City has been there for SimCom. We want to see jobs. But in addition, I also, just for clarification, given the previous issue, I copied an email into my Word document, which is now <laughs> saved as email Kip Harrington from our staff, just to clarify. But that document does come from our tr um, transportation planner who under map three states, staff recommends that the side path be constructed on the north side of Disc Drive due to the lack of development along the south side and the possible traffic crossing hazards if the side path were to be constructed along the south side. In addition, he also <coughs> points out that on map two, uh, under our Rapid City Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan, the prioritized sidewalk pass designates Disc Drive as a high priority sidewalk project and identifies desired path. 
worn paths through the grass caused by pedestrian uh, traffic on both sides of Dist Drive. Um, I think it's also notable to note that if you take the time to look on Google Earth, you can see the worn path up to a two mile, uh, from up to two miles from an aerial food, uh, photo. So to say that there isn't uh, clear indications that this path is being used, um, I, I would love to hear a counter argument to that. Uh, there's more than adequate images and photographic evidence that says that there's people walking along this. In addition, we also have runoff into that street, which is another aspect of this. In no way are we trying to create a burden. In addition, I would also like to note for the last uh, point to wrap up, in addition, I have also emailed your client even to possibly discuss some sort of compromise to lessen the burden to him with this issue because he's creating jobs. And it disappoints me that there wasn't even the willingness to have that discussion. The fact of the matter is, is as an alderman, I have to look out for my constituents and I also have to look out for their safety. So I am in support of moving forward on this sidewalk to clearly identify why I, I am taking the stand that I am. Thank you, and I'll yield. We'll go to Alderman Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Um, without having access to my emails, uh, I know I've made some comments in emails, and uh, what I would like to do is, um, first of all, let me, let me suggest the idea that uh, I'm very supportive of sidewalks. I understand Simcom's uh, situation up there. Um, it, it seems like we are faced with this either or situation of installing uh, sidewalks or not getting jobs up there. Um, what, what, that concerns me as the point of the either or or having the sidewalks to nowhere. Um, what I'm looking at or maybe looking to advice from uh, council leadership and the mayor is this for me this is the second time this issue is coming up came up and uh, the um, site that was uh, acknowledged here just a bit a little bit ago on east highway 44 another one of those cases of a sidewalk to nowhere um, i would like to see if we can't start a process to remove that from the case of being either or or, or as some of the council members put it, as we're, we feel like we're getting threatened from that point of view. And I, I, I'd rather not take that position of, of being threatened from, from the uh, business people. I would like to have it as an either or conversation rather than a threat. So we also have the access to the warps uh, as well, a waiver of a right of, of appeal. And then if that is not agreed to, then we have the right to force an installation of a sidewalk. Um, but what I'm looking for is if we can get a conversation started up separate from from this. Uh, and, and I'm not sure if this needs to go to legal and finance or go over to uh, public works, but at least to have that type of conversation. And for the members of the city council, they've probably seen my comments on that uh, either or situation that we've had to contend with and um, so that, that's just my suggestion for my part is to, uh, let's get a conversation started on this so we aren't faced with the either or thank you uh, mayor I'll yield the floor thank you Alderman Nordstrom and we'll go to Alderwoman Bonnie Peterson thank you I don't know if I have a exactly who to um, ask this question to. Um, Dale or Jason um, has predicted this is going to cost about 150000 for SimCom or th uh, to install these uh, sidewalks, which is the lion's share of the money that the city's already given them to, um, um, to try to help support uh, bringing jobs here to Rapid City. Is there any uh, funding or anything like that to help um, businesses to do something like this? And we'll go to our acting public works director, Dale Tech, to interrupt you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, the city really does not have a funding mechanism other than through our capital improvement plan for the installation of anything in public right-of-way. 
Um, I'm not aware of any assistance program or grants that are available for the installation of sidewalks in this case. Okay, thank you. Um, it's very clear when you uh, drive by on both sides of the roads that there's paths are worn. So it's very much indicated uh, the sidewalk needs to go in there. Uh, and like Alderman Mason said in my email that I referred to earlier, that um, I couldn't access that. It, we did get a report saying it is identified as a major. Um, it's on our our wish list of where in that master plan that was uh, discussed. I uh, also about president of giving another uh, waiver. Um, Mr. Lust, whenever uh, we gave a waiver at that time, knowing full well and discussed uh, also at that time that the city can call Arter in those sidewalks at any time. So even on the one hand, we gave a waiver. On the other hand, we said, we're coming back at you when it's, it's determined that the need is there. So, um, so I don't think that would really appeal. Uh, apply to this case. This is tough because it's, it's an age-old problem of, uh, you know, there's lots of people that don't have the money to put in the sidewalk or there's lots of people that don't, you know, have other needs. Uh, but it's tough because SimCom is um, starting up. I uh, want to be fair to that, want to look at the other side of how much money the city gives to companies to try to bring business in. And then here we have someone that's actively doing it and, um, you know, going to put a $150,000 uh, charge on them. I don't know what the solution would be. I would be, um, I mean, believe me, I want the sidewalks in there because we, we need to have them in there. But, I wonder if we could give them a year to do it, if that would be um, another option uh, so that they transfer the, their pain over a longer period of time where they would know they were having that expense coming at them. Um, but I can't make a motion at this point, but I uh, do have sympathy and I, I do have concerns that we might be uh, inflicting pain on the people that we want to help to bring jobs into Rapid City, but at the same time we have the sidewalk. So I'll listen to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. We do not currently have a motion on the floor. We'll go to Alderman John Roberts. I think there's a big difference between this one and the one on Highway 44. Um, I think I mistakenly was a person that said that was a sidewalk to nowhere out there. But the reason being is there was no sidewalks for two and a half miles either way and no major businesses. There we have Haynes Avenue, we have Best Buy on one side, and we have the Rushmore Mall on the other side. So to me that's not a sidewalk to nowhere. <laughs> in Rapid City that's a sidewalk to some of the major places in Rapid City. I do, um, I, I do have concerns, you know, on a startup company that, you know, I don't want to put any undue financial hardship. Um, but from what I've gathered for this company, they are making quite a lot of money. Um, and I think that uh, all this is going to do is improve their property value. So... I think it's time to get sidewalks in up there. It should have been done many years ago, unfortunately. I think that Mr. Dunham's going to be the one that's going to have to do it, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go to Alderman Sasso. We do not have a motion. When I'm done, we will. <laughs> oh. um. <laughs> you need to offer it in the beginning. Okay. I'd, li I'd like to make a motion to... Order in the sidewalks. We have a motion. Is that by September 1, or do you want to put a different date in there? I think that that date was set back in April, 
right? I, I think I think we would need to probably stick with that date. Um, actually, we can probably open that for some discussion. They're, well, they're, yeah, they wouldn't be able to get them done, but I guess depending on how that order in, they would have to be completed by that date. Is that correct? Let's go to Dale Tech okay. for the new. Dale, can you give us a new date based on the same time frames? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's going to have to be some level of design work done. Mm -hmm. um, bids or at least quotes received by the, the parties involved. And it's not just one property owner. It's the three property owners that uh, are affected by this action. I would say that you should give them at least 90 days to be able to get all those functions done and get the sidewalks constructed. Okay, I would uh, uh, put my, that n those 90 days would give us, uh, let's see, I'd, I guess 90 days from, from now, looking out. Uh, and this way that would be before the snow flies, ideally. Okay, so that would be November. Mid November. <clears throat> November 18. Okay, that is your motion. That is my motion, and may I add some comments? We have a second. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a we have a motion by Alderman Sasso and a second by Alderman Mason to proceed with ordering the sidewalks and to allow the property owners until November 18, 2011, to install the sidewalks on their own accord. Alderman Sasso. Uh, I appreciate your, your comments, uh, Mr. Lust, and, and one thing that I think is very important, we all appreciate SINCOM. We all appreciate businesses in Rapid City. We also appreciate safety, pedestrian safety, and this is something I believe will also be beneficial to SINCOM employees, being able to get out and walk safely. It promotes a healthy lifestyle in Rapid City, and that, that's something that uh, when you look at citizen safety, very important. And also, I know we've had the discussion on the sidewalks to nowhere, and my approach and my feeling is that if you put in enough sidewalks, eventually they're going to get somewhere. And I think uh, I agree with uh, Alderman Nordstrom that at some point we probably as a council need to have a little more in-depth uh, discussion about this moving forward, but I think here we're very solid and uh, this came about back in April and the uh, pedestrian bicycle master plan does indicate that it is a high priority for Rapid City. So thank you. And we'll go to Alderman Charity Doyle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my comment may be a moot point at this point, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I just took a couple minutes and put myself in the shoes of the owners of Simcom and looked at the 100-foot easement that they have along Disk Drive, which essentially is saying we have 100 feet of property along that curve of Disk Drive that we can't use. So I can completely understand the frustration. My question would be, is there a way that we can assess this and draw the payments out to make it more palatable so that it gets done, but it's not a lump sum up front. And again, I don't know if it's a moot point or if that's something that can be discussed. Thank you. Dale, would you like to answer that? Dale Tech. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, there could be an assessed project that could be done to spread the payments out, but I believe the assessment policy also adds interest to that. And I believe that the rate is 9%. Um, I'm sorry, five percent. I'm sorry, um, and it could be drawn out for I think five years for sidewalks. May I continue, um, Mr. Lust? My question is for you, if I may. Are you in a position to take that to Mr. Dunham and the people representing Simcom? and find out if that's a more workable solution because they're going to get ordered in and we don't want it to be a, a burden. We want it to be done and, and done working with us, not having the city just imposing something. So I don't know if that's 
doable. Proposing it's certainly something I can take to the council and, or to my client and see if that's more palatable. Um, I, that flexibility, I do appreciate the flexibility. I'm sure my client appreciates that, um, and I can certainly take it back to them. I, I would like to address Alderman Wright, um, and I apologize if the tone or the use of the word precedent was deemed as a threat. I only use that as in I should, maybe should use example rather than precedent. But in my world, in the legal world, precedent is not a bad word. Uh, precedent is something that shows an example or a course of conduct, so it was in no way intended to be a threat of any kind. Uh, to me, a threat um, would be if you don't do this, then, or if you make my client do this, then we'll do something. That that would be a threat, and in no way it was intended to be, be a threat. So I do apologize if you took it that way. <coughs> Other questions, Mr. Mayor? We'll go to, uh, I think Jason Green has yeah, an please. answer to Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to add on to what Mr. Tech said. On the process for assessing on sidewalks begins with the council ordering the sidewalk in to be installed by a certain date. If the property owner does not do that, then the city would come in and, and do the installation and then assess the cost. So this is the first step in that process, and then ultimately the property owner could make that decision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Charity? No? Okay. We'll go to Alderman Wright. Thank you, sir. Just a question we, I'd like everyone to consider and, and possibly amend the motion. And according to the uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan, Map 2, it says the, the road, if I'm reading the map, from Haynes over to, um, I don't know if that's a disc drive or whatever it is, on the east end by the theaters. Uh, that entire area is a high priority and it's developed by desire paths. It's an entire segment. So I'm just wondering why don't we just do the whole length if we're going to go to that problem and let's, uh, that way we don't have a sidewalk going to nowhere and we're addressing an issue within the master plan and yes, put it together as an assessed project. I would like that open for discussion. Thank you, Mayor. The, the original notification was to three property owners um, from Best Buy to the first entrance into the Rushmore Mall. You know, I don't believe that the Rushmore Mall property owners have been notified of an impending um, notification for ordering in sidewalks. I don't know if you want to take that action and just give them the 90 days to get it installed or to consider them opportunity to come visit with you as well. Well, I'm obviously, uh, excuse me if I can speak, obviously expanding the scope of the project and obviously would require that. And I think we should also look at other opportunities such as suggested the assessment and maybe are, are there other some possibly some funds that we could use in matching this through the bicycle program or something to offset the costs. In other words, bring it back later and look at the entire segment from Haynes over to the, the area by the theaters. I just an idea. I don't know what everybody else is thinking, but I guess I really don't have anything more to add to that. Um, I, it's it's the council's desire. If you want uh, to take a look at that, we can certainly notify the the property owner that uh, that is an item being considered by the council and give them notification that uh, sidewalks have been ordered in. I'm done. Thank. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I do have a question for Dale Tech as well. And just so I'm clear on it, what is the actual cost in this to SimCon directly out of the three? That's a good question. I can't give an exact amount. The $150,000 that Mr. Lust had, had quoted is probably a pretty fair estimate. Um, certainly there's some topographic issues, some type C retaining walls would likely have to be constructed to hold back the earthen embankment to get a sidewalk in there. Um, you know, we're talking anywhere from 50 to to $100 a, a lineal foot to install that sidewalk, so. Thank you. And I too, with Charity Doyle, um, Alderwoman Charity Doyle, I don't want to miss any opportunities. Um, 
I've asked Mr. Dunham possibly for a compromise very similar to what Alderwoman Doyle has proposed here, and I would still be willing to do that. Um, I, I think that it's in the best interest of the community that we do support jobs, but at the same point, safety has to be a priority, and it has to be a priority for myself as a representative of my constituents. Um, and it has to be, more importantly, one of the highest priorities. Uh, one of the things that I guess I would like to look at is um, if that would be something that SIMCOM would be willing to do, um, I would definitely be looking for possibly a substitute motion to see if we could possibly look at that as an option. But um, we would have to clearly order those in first. Um, so with that, I just want to touch on those two points, and I will yield. Thank you. We'll go to Alderman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This issue causes some very interesting thought, and, and many of them have been brought up tonight. There is a safety issue, and certainly we have the ordinance in place for a, for a a justified reason. I have no problem in a new development that we go in and if this were under construction that we would certainly say let's make sure that we put a sidewalk in and that, that the folks building that new half of a million square foot building would understand that that was part of the cost. I have not really a problem if everyone in the neighborhood if we said that we've decided now that there needs to be a bike path from Lacrosse to Haynes Avenue and everyone across the way understands that and is given adequate time to do the engineering and plan and to to uh, put in their sidewalk. I struggle a little bit that just because we took an empty vacant building that used to employ a lot of people and found someone to move in there that was willing to employ several hundred people and remodel it and invest in our community and hopefully make a whole ton of money doing it because that's what investments are about. Someone's risking their money to bring those jobs to town. Not my money, not your money. Yes, we've got some city money invested here too, but for the large part, an individual or a corporation is investing their money to bring those jobs to town. There's a message being sent that, that's very frightening to me tonight. It's only been a few months ago that we had large, long discussions about the second floor review committee, about how difficult we had made it to do business in Rapid City. How we had created one roadblock after another roadblock after another stumbling point. And by no means am I saying that developers should get a free pass and that safety is no longer an issue. That's not what I'm suggesting in the least. But I'm having a real struggle here because we have an opportunity to bring a large number of jobs that our folks in town have been asking us to bring into town. These are not minimum wage jobs. They're certainly a step or two or three above that. To set the, the precedent that we now are going to penalize anyone that comes to town by holding their hands to the fire is frightening to me. But I have to say, equally frightening is the fact that we give them a free pass. I'm struggling on this one. I truly am. But I have, to, I have to lean on the fact that right now we have a, a worn dirt path on the south side of that road and one on the north side. I know that because I went up there the other day and walked it. You see, I remember reading a story about a college a few years back. I thought it was brilliant. Brand new college, built the whole thing, built all the buildings, did not put a single sidewalk in. They opened the school. First year of school, the kids told them where to put the sidewalks because they walked across the middle of the, of the 
grassy areas, and they told them where they were going to walk anyway. I think that's a message that we have up there. There's a path on the north side and a path on the south side. I don't know if ordering in a sidewalk partway along the north side is going to solve the problem. I think some common sense here, a little bit of patience here, could serve us all very, very well. And let's remember what it is that we're trying to accomplish. We need to accomplish the, the, the promise that we all made, and that was to protect our citizens, to make them safe, and to bring more jobs, more beneficial jobs, to the city of Rapid City. And hopefully I haven't confused you as much as I have myself, because I'm still just as tough on where I'm going to go with this vote as I was before I started. Thank you. Just so everyone knows, we are having some trouble with the lights tonight. I currently have a speaker request here for Jordan Mason and Ron Sasso, and Bonnie Peterson's light is not working. Is anybody else's light not working? Okay, well, let's go to Bonnie Peterson first, and then we'll go to Richie and then to Jordan. Is that okay? Okay, thank you, Mayor. I would like to make a substitute motion or a friendly amendment, however you want to classify it. I would like to... Um, offer the motion that we would order in the sidewalks or um, all the way down to La Crosse and that we uh, give them exactly one year to complete this. And that way it would give them all the parties to be to see if they could work, uh, if they need to do monthly payments. It would, because I think we ordered it all at once, The probably the price per foot would be cheaper for everybody since it's a larger area. So anyway, I was just offering that to hope see if there's anyone else that's interested in giving um, giving them another year. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? The motion is to uh, Basically, it's a substitute motion to uh, extend the sidewalk all the way from Haynes to La Crosse on the north side and to give one year to complete it. Okay, we, do, uh, we do not have a second. Motion dies for lack of a second. We'll go, we'll go to uh, Dale Tech. Okay. Let's go to uh, Richie, you're in line, Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. We'll get the lights one of these times. <laughs> um, just trying to remember all of the things that were stated here, but especially by uh, Alderman Dave Davis. Uh, I, I'm, I'm struggling with this as well. The, the, the thing that rises to the surface for me on this whole thing is the timing issue. Um, when it gets down to November, the weather gets iffy and everything else, and then what happens if they cannot do it because of inclement uh, con conditions? And then what do we do with them after that? I would like to see, uh, reiterate my, my position as to we need to, not necessarily a continuous item, but we need to have more discussion on this. Um, so, m I, I'm r r struggling with this within the sense of that uh, just because of the timing, uh, if we delay this any further on it, I, I don't know that's going to make any difference as far as the installation of the sidewalk on it. It would give us as council members an opportunity to kind of take a look at some other alternatives of, of what we can do, f such as what Alderman Wright has suggested it and, and uh, Alderman Peter Peterson has su suggested about uh, uh, the continuation of the sidewalk from Haynes to, to La Crosse. I'm a little uncomfortable with that notion as well, but but I would like to ha have the opportunity to study it further. But essentially, I keep coming back to my original position. I would like to have us, as the city council, take a look at our policies, get a, get a chance to review it, so that we are not put into these either-or positions. Um, 
which I'm not comfortable with. I want to see the sidewalks in there because of all the aforementioned reasons, the dirt path especially comes to my mind. So if we get an opportunity to take a look at this in a little bit more in depth as a policy, rather than imposing something on them tonight, um, I'd be more comfortable with that. And if we need a continuous motion, continuous continuation motion on this, I'd be more comfortable with that rather than uh, not allowing the sidewalks to go in and or facing uh, a imposition of sidewalks. So I'm kind of looking for some middle ground on this whole thing, on this uh, process. So anyway, that's, that's my position right now. I'm still uncomfortable with forcing these folks into putting a, a sidewalk, in, in with, especially within 90 days. Thank you. I'll yield the floor. Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to hopefully provide a little clarity um, because it does sound like there's been some confusion. Uh, so again, I'm maybe call me a stickler for someone on the facts and the record, but uh, looking at the prior history of the council and specifically the legal and finance committee meeting from February 16th, uh, Simcom did enter into an agreement with the city of Rapid City by taking the opportunity to capture fund in the amount of $243,000. Uh, this grant from the city was in exchange for a promise that Simcom will create 162 jobs by the end of 2013. Uh, to go on, there were, at this time, there were 55 employees and it was also agreed with the stipulation that if this is not done and this promise is not fulfilled, that the grant will convert to a 3% loan if the city determines substantial progress has not been made towards the job creation goals. Uh, the reason I bring this up is that as far as the job creation and I am still in favor of helping and making a compromise, but just so this is clear, the job creation, there's already been an agreement, a legally binding agreement between the city and Simcom. That's been established. They took the money. They took the taxpayers' money in exchange for that agreement. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, also, to provide a little clarity and shed a little light on what the current situation is, uh, it, Dis Drive already has existing high, uh, sidewalk on the north side of budding IHOP, which extends for some length down where there currently isn't anything. It then crosses the street all the way up to Best Buy and terminates very close to, uh, as it's outlined on our map, Property A. Property B would be Simcom. Then there's also Property C owner that goes to Riddles generally, and then it continues again on the Olive Garden, and then it continues. Uh, this is simply the idea of connecting two points we have, you know, from point A to point B, there's sidewalk. From B to C, there's no sidewalk, and C to D, there is. So we want to connect, you know, this gap right here. And that's all, you know, that's really the simple way of breaking it down. Um, so unfortunately, there, there is a gap in our infrastructure. There is existing infrastructure that already outlines where this is going. Um, so I guess the, what I'm trying to do is, is instead of muddying the waters, I'm looking at the entire disk drive, which there, you know, there already is, and that's something that I'm, I'm fully in support of. I think that's a great point because going on the eastern uh, side of disk drive, there is another gap that we could definitely look at in the future. But f for this time being, it seems to me that this has been looked at by our engineering and public works staff. And uh, we have a real opportunity to provide for a uh, solid infrastructure and also, again, just to touch on, provide a safe pedestrian walk path for our, our, for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Alderman Sasso. One of the things that I think keeps coming up is also historically, you know, we're dealing with some decisions that were made years back where when that property was originally developed, sidewalks weren't put in. We're trying to fix that, I think, as, as a council. And we have one of three businesses before us today. There are two others that are also going to be ordered in, uh, the sidewalks. So I really strongly urge everyone on council that this is something that, as a council, supporting our citizens, and it is not, I, I, I feel very strongly that it is not something that is a knock on the business. It will benefit the business in the long run. It is, it is something that 
that I feel strongly we need to do for our citizens, their safety. Thank you. Any further discussion? Everyone understands the motion. The motion is to authorize staff to proceed with or the process to order in sidewalks and to allow the property owners until November 18, 2011 to install, install the sidewalks. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Roll call, please. Davis. No. Peterson. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Brown. No. Wright. No. Nordstrom. No. Mason. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Sasso. Aye. Five to four. It carries. Motion carries. Item 52. Gary Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Number uh, 52, approve point one six utility funding of $1,518,350 for the extension of water mains along Seeger Drive, 143rd Avenue, and Country Road. Since I have to stain on this, I will open it up to the floor. Do we have a motion? So moved. Motion by Robert, second by Davis. Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 53, Alderman Brown. Parking on the south side of Main Street between 5th and 6th Street. And I'll open the floor for Alderman John Roberts. This is something I brought up in the public works meeting last week, trying to find some kind of a solution on hot summer nights for some of the businesses downtown. Um, after talking to some of the businesses a little bit more, uh, the ones that I've talked to have kind of concurred that three weeks isn't enough to really do any, a lot of help. Um, so I'm just going to move that we get rid of it, acknowledge, table it, acknowledge, acknowledge it. it. Yeah, just acknowledge it. Okay, we have, we'll go ahead and allow that motion, to, a motion to acknowledge by Roberts. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Davis. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Bids, Pauline. The first bid before you is for Frontier Place Reconstruction Project. We received two bids on this project. The engineer's estimate was $355,000. The recommendation is to award the bid to Rapid Construction Company, LLC, in the total amount of $336,202.88. Do have a second? We have a motion by Peterson and a second by Nordstrom. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Next item before you is the 2011 fire hydrant installation annual project. The engineer's estimate on the <coughs> base bid alone was $36,600 with the bid coming in at $66,491.20. The recommendation <coughs> is to actually um, reject all bids and allow the staff to re-bid a later date with modifications to the project schedule. Motion by Davis, second by Peterson. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 56, Residential Plaza funding. Do we have a motion or discussion from the council? Alderman Mason. I'd like to be able to also make a quick comment after the motion, but I would make the motion to go with the recommendations by Mr. Hanny Shaffey to create a committee to allow for monthly updates. And in addition, I just wanted also to say that I, I am glad to see that the uh, developer is willing to communicate very openly, and this is, uh, this is a welcome development with this project, and we're happy to hear that it's uh, moving forward quickly. Thank you. Just to repeat the motion, uh, Alderman Mason, if you could repeat the motion one more time. Yes, Mayor. Uh, the motion is to take the recommendations of Mr. Shaffey to create a subcommittee to allow monthly updates to the council on this project as recommended. Okay. And we have a second by Roberts. And so it's a subcommittee of the council. So yes. Not, not a committee of 
community members, but you're looking for a subcommittee of the council just to make sure that we're on the same page. Yes, I mean, I, I think given the sensitive nature that was described, I, I think that might be best. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Alderman Peterson, I am very sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, and I would offer to uh, serve on this subcommittee. And also, Mr. Chaffee, I have, have forgotten what your uh, visitor's name is, but I wanted to welcome him here from Egypt and to uh, let him know that we're all watching. We're very interested in what's going on um, in Egypt right now with your country's uh, fight for more uh, personal freedoms. And um, so I don't want you to feel like you're alone. We're all, we're all watching. Alderman Nordstrom. If I may, Mayor, just a point of personal privilege uh, at recognizing the uh, Apollo missions that brought in the, the moon rocks. Uh, I was part of the Apollo mission 14 that brought in them, so we may have been involved in the uh, bringing in the moon rocks for you folks to study. So uh, I just wanted to take that uh, opportunity and thank you, Mayor, for that personal privilege. Very good. We have a motion and a second just so everyone we're all on the same page. It's been uh, my practice that when we have uh, committees appointed uh, of council members or committees that have council members on them that I've deferred to council leadership to make those appointments. So uh, Alderman Davis and uh, Bonnie Peterson will be making those appointments and presenting those names to one of the next committees for, um, for approval by the council. Three, four, how many you want? Um, Alderman Mason, your motion didn't specify how many uh, Council members, you were thinking for the committee, you want to do three or four? Maybe, maybe do four. And, Stay under five. And, since yeah, maybe, no. maybe do four. That way, if uh, somebody can't attend, you still have good attendance. Four would sound adequate and under the quorum, so that and, makes sense to me. And that's okay with Alderman Roberts. It is. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Item fifty-seven. Uh, Alderman Brown. Or Thank yours. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, Alderman uh, Doyle was doing a wonderful job of getting her husband home from the hospital and comfortable. I had the honor of taking her place to uh, be the council liaison to the Menelousa Han Senior Citizen Center. And the Great Panthers of their board insisted that I give a shout out, that's their word, a shout out to the council and a thank you for putting in the handicapped automatic door openers and that. Said you cannot imagine what a difference it's made for them. They're very happy. They sent a card and I said I would pass the card out and give you all a shout out and a thank you. Do we have a motion to acknowledge? So motion by uh, Mason and a second by Roberts to acknowledge. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed motion carries. Uh, we're now on um, Public hearing items uh, 58 through 64. And we have a motion to open public comment for items 58 through 64. Motion by Mason, second by Roberts. All in favor say aye. Opposed, motion carries. We have one speaker request form, and that's for item 64. Item 64, and uh, um, uh, Gavin Williams or Roy England, would you like to speak or stand by for questions? We're here for questions. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to close public comment? So, second. We have a motion by Roberts and a second by Wright. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Um, items uh, 58 through 60, would anybody like to remove any of those items? No? Do we have a motion to continue these items until September 6th? Motion by Davis, second by Peterson to continue items 58 through 60 to September 6th. And uh, Alderman all Peterson, you have not turned your light on. Oh, okay. Your light's not working. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Um, now we have um, alcohol licenses. Um, Alderman Mason. Okay. 
So I need to, all right. Items 61 through 63 are consent public hearing items. So do we need to remove any of those items? No. Seeing, seeing none, do we have a motion to approve? We have a motion by Brown, second by Roberts to approve items 61 through 63. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item number 64. This is a request by uh, Convoy of Hope for a special exception to the flood area construction regulations located north of Omaha between North Mount Rushmore Road and Fifth Street and Memorial Park. Do we have a motion or discussion? Motion by Wright, second by Roberts. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. And I, I would just like to interject. I want to take a moment of personal privilege to encourage all council members, uh, community members to attend. Uh, I look forward to this event on, on uh, Saturday. I will be down there assisting in writing resumes. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, if you'd like to volunteer, you can, uh, if any council member would like to volunteer, you can call my office and we'll put you in touch with the, uh, with the organizers. So it's an exciting event for our community. So. Item 65, bill list. The total bill list before you is $10,253,259.42. There are no additions. Do we have a motion? We have a motion by Roberts and a second by Peterson. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. No executive session. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Roberts, second by Mason. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.